Okay, hello everybody. I'm Mill, and today I'm going to walk you through making your score sound somewhat like you want it to be in MuseScore. So when you're writing music in MuseScore, I'm assuming you don't have a full orchestra or band behind you that's there to play music as you compose it. That's a bit unrealistic. So mo most of the time, you're going to have yourself and MuseScore, and you're going to want to listen to MuseScore playing back your music with the sounds that come in MuseScore. The only caveat to that is, sometimes you have to do a little bit of extra tuning to make everything sound the way you want it to be, and make it the optimal environment for composing certain types of music. So, today I'm going to show you just how to set up, and you can apply this method to any like type of sound or style that you want, but I'm going to do it with just a sort of rock band, and get that sounding like we want it to because I can guarantee you it's not going to sound the way that I want it to when I just first start a rock band project. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up MuseScore, obviously. Um, okay, so we've got MuseScore, we can just create a new score. And we can call this, uh, the title can be Generic Pop Punk um, Dedicated to Billy Joe Armstrong. And obviously composed by Mill Smith. Next. And I'm just going to choose, because I can't be bothered setting up my own band. I'm, I'm really not that involved. I'm just going to choose the rock band. And I'm going to hope it's the right band. Um, let's see. I mean, G minor sounds good, don't you think? So, G minor. Um, I won't choose a tempo yet. I, I put it in there just so I can change it up. Because I don't know what tempo I want it to be at. Um, let's choose next. It's going to be 4-4. Four, four. It's pop punk. And I'll just go with the default number of bars. Okay, so finish. So I've got our generic pop punk. Um, so for this tune, I think I might want a guitar sound that goes like. So I think I'll keep that sort of guitar sound in there. So we'll, first we'll write that part, and then we'll just write. I don't know, a pentatonic guitar solo all over the top, and a bass line following the red notes of the chords, and a simple rock beat, and we'll see how it sounds. So, first I'll start. I will start by writing my rhythm guitar part. So you have first, you'll want your G, G, D, G. And then I'll make another B flat chord. And so we can play this back and it'll sound like I want it to sound, so... And you can have that repeating for days, so just select these two bars. Um, that's shift click to select the two bars in the empty spaces. And then press R to repeat it. We've got a suitable guitar riff for our pop punk song. But there's something you'll notice. So if you listen to that sample there, it sounds quite like this. Which I mean is, is a fine sound, but that is probably best suited for a different style of guitar than pop punk. What we want it to sound like is more like this. But, when you enter those instruments in, there's not really a clear way you can actually see, as a beginner to the program, to make it distorted. There's no like effects, loops or anything, so if you look through the view values, there's, no, there's nothing here that would say add effect to the guitar. But what there is, is there's a mixer. So if you want to change up the sound of the instrument, just click on the mixer. And then you'll find this little mixer, which has all of the different instruments. So lead vocals, backing vocals, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, 
bass guitar drum set. I'm actually just going to remove those vocals because I, I'm not running vocal lines. Um, so we've got this. Um, so this is the panel where you can change everything you want basically. If you're using MIDI to export your sound into other programs, it's all right there. You can change the volume of different of different instruments in within the mix, because sometimes the uh, dynamics that you put in the score aren't really enough to just change the volume of a part up and down. That can be a really easy way to do it. You can pan them left and right for a stereo sound experience. That's all well and good. But you can even mute in solo tracks if you want to. But what we're going to do is we want to find this rhythm guitar and look in the sound section. It says clean guitar. Oh, it looks like it's hailing on my roof right now. Fun times. Um, so sound, and you can click on clean guitar, and you've got all of these different options for tunes. Now, you could go with tubular bells, and then the rhythm guitar part will sound like this. But what you're probably more inclined to select in a pop punk piece would be the overdrive guitar or distortion guitar. So I'm first going to just try the overdrive guitar and see what it sounds like. Um, so I'll click on that, and then play. So we've heard that now. I'm also going to test the distortion guitar and see if that sounds any better to us. I think that's more of a lead sound, so I'll keep that for the lead guitar. And also try a palm muted guitar, because that might sound nice. It doesn't sound nice. Sounds like a violin. So we'll stay on the overdrive guitar for the guitar part. Um, and now we'll add in the bass line because the bass is another instrument. Um, I'll just do, uh, you know, your crotch. Your crotch <laughs> so it's got that really simple bass line. And I'll just repeat that there. And now you see. Yeah, it. But I think the bass is a bit too quiet in the mix. So I might just turn down the rhythm guitar a bit. Because for a rhythm guitar, that's a bit abrasive. So I'll just turn that down. Your music teacher might want you to use dynamics. But I think they're a lot better used when you're affecting the over, like smaller changes within the song rather than the actual mix of the sound. Remember, this is not for the musicians performing it. This is for you composing your piece. So you want it to sound right. And another tip is to not really turn up the instruments past 100% but turn down the ones that you want to be quieter because otherwise you might actually get some weird distortion which you don't want. Um, and the next thing is the bass guitar. You might want fretless bass, you might want slap bass. You can choose any type of bass because realistically you might be writing a funk piece and need slap bass. You might be writing jazz and need fretless bass. But right now I'm going to go away from picked bass and choose fingered bass because it is objectively better. Okay. People are going to kill me for saying that, but that's alright. Um, the other thing is Lee's guitar. So now we've got this lovely rhythm section without the drum set. So I'll just add in a drum beat. Then snare on the off beats. Okay. that works that's pretty simple works well um, and a drummer's gonna kill me for writing that line so now we've got our drums rhythm and bass um, I don't actually know there might be different yes you can change drum set sounds as well so say 
you know, you appreciate the sound of an acoustic drum kit. You think it sounds nice if you've got acoustic snares and all that. But really what you're looking for is you want to sound like Joe Satriani, who doesn't play pop punk, but that's alright. Because on Surfing with the Alien, that's all drum machine. So you want TR-808. So let's choose the TR-808. And we've got a nice drum machine now. And that's right up there, poised for the top 40. Um, but the next thing is, we want a lead, gu lead guitar sound. And it's going to be the exact same as rhythm guitar. But, so I might just play that and let's see if we can get a little melody. So we So we've got this here, and now what we want to do for the lead guitar is the same thing, change the sound, but this time we might want, this is probably going to sound bad, but let's try the feedback guitar, um, go for a slash solo, um, I keep pushing it. And now we've got this lovely guitar, uh, guitar song, um, and basically that's it. The last thing we want to do is, this is a, another really good thing you can do, just to change things up. We can chuck a slur in, boo -hoo -boo -boo, to make that sound a bit nicer, like a real guitarist would play it. So we can just drag a slur in onto that one, and it makes the slur for us. And I'll put it there too, and now we've got a lovely song. And yeah, so basically that's how you set up your own band with all the right sounds to make a good song because realistically the original sounds would have sounded really bland. So what I'm going to do now is I'm... Um, oh, no, don't do that, don't do that. Um, what I'm, I'm going to do now is I'm going to set back the lead guitar to clean guitar. I'm going to set back the rhythm guitar to clean guitar. I'm going to set back the drum set to standard. And you'll hear how this doesn't sound nearly as good. Like, you can hear it's the same song. You can hear it still sounds alright. But really, if you take the two, and you really compare it, there's not much of a difference. Like, like there's a big difference. The fact that having this... That really adds in that mojo, as Austin Powers would say. <laughs> um, it gives it that feeling, you know? It's, it's rebellious, it's rock. And that can be really nice to hear while you're composing. Yeah. Anyway, that's just a little thing on making sounds.